Um, we are now going, I'm now going to hand over to Roger Battersby, who is speaking as, in his role as Managing Director of PRP Architects, and he will be talking about uh, type, the types and future trends uh, of the, of, uh, in the housing, the type of housing needs that we have. All right, thank you very much indeed, Roger. Thank you very much, Steve. And thank you, Gavin, for inviting me along and involving me in this um, great initiative. Um, I think you're setting a bit of an example to the rest of society, actually, because so few of us plan um, for our older age in any way, and um, it, it, it's great to see a bit of forward um, planning. Um, right, my, uh, my presentation is going to cover a bit of background and context, uh, a little bit about current uh, policy in housing older people, and the aging population. Um, I'm going to explain the different um, housing typologies, and um, uh, Jonathan's already given a, a, a good introduction into that, but I'm going to um, show you um, some inspiration from Europe, and I always find that um, some of our European neighbors are a decade or so ahead of us in terms of their thinking. Um, then we'll look at some relevant projects um, uh, locally, um, and the last section of my, um, my presentation here will be about the introduction to the workshops. But our objective, our broader objective today, is to um, start to develop a design brief collectively of what your needs are, what housing uh, you're aspiring to, what other services and facilities need to go into this development, um, and also start to discuss the um, site selection criteria it's so key where these buildings are located. Um, we'll come back to that in some detail. So um, you'll be aware from uh, the A&E crisis over the uh, January, over the winter period, uh, what sort of pressures the uh, NHS is under at the moment. Basically, we're facing an unsustainable future in terms of funding in, in the NHS. And the solution has to be to, um, to push more care into the community as the um, population ages, and as, as the demands become ever greater for care and support for older people. Um, this slide really encapsulates that in a way, that we have to move people out of acute hospital care, which is enormously expensive at around £3,000 a week for a hospital bed, um, into, back into the community. And you'll see that uh, the cost of a nursing home bed um, probably ranges between um, uh, 500 and, 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 and 1,000. Residential care, um, the public sector, yes, about 350. So this is what your local authority would be prepared to fund a bed for in a nursing, uh, nursing home. And then um, assisted living. So as soon as you move into a housing model, it becomes very much more affordable to support um, uh, people collectively. And then home care is, is generally costed on an hourly basis and is very flexible. So the uh, financial case is, is, is very clear from that, that, that we have to go for uh, not only more affordable solutions, but who wants to be in an acute hospital? We want to be in our own homes. Um, you will also have heard in the news yesterday um, about uh, the Chancellor's plans for um, devolving health care in Manchester to the city, six billion pounds funding um, uh, uh, for, uh, for health. Um, and I think that's the beginning of, a, of, of a, a great new trend we're going to see in sort of devolution of, of uh, centralized services into, into the communities. Um, and very pivotal in, in this policy is linking up health and adult services. But what so many of the um, politicians and others um, fail to recognize is the importance of housing. And uh, Lord Best, who's very involved in this sector, refers to um, this as a three-legged stool. Uh, you need all three legs for the stool to, to stand up. And the importance of housing cannot be underestimated in terms of its potential impact on our, our, our health. So the current uh, policy is um, first of all, about supporting people in their own homes. And the great majority of us choose to stay on in our own homes, something like 90, 90%. And this is uh, done with the support of home care services and home <coughs> improvement agencies to make the adaptations and adjustments 
that we need as we, as we get older. But at the same time, um, the provision of new specialist housing um, for um, independent or supported um, living. Uh, and it's essential that all new homes are designed to inclusive standards um, so that we can make the aids and adaptations very easily within, um, within the home at a future date. This um, slide uh, attempts to encapsulate the full spectrum of housing and care for older people. So you'll see across the top an age range from uh, 50s through to 90s. Um, and we've got three distinct categories there, what I would um, term as younger older people, then there's the sort of intermediate uh, uh, group, and then there's the high care group. And um, the move from our own homes into some form of specialist housing will be driven <coughs> by a completely different set of, of needs, or, or largely different set of needs between these different groups. So um, younger older people might move as a lifestyle choice, they might be um, uh, uh, downsizing and releasing um, equity from their properties. It might be a, a move about security. Um, the intermediate group will probably have some care need. Um, there, there might have been a bereavement, might have lost a partner. Um, it might also be about lifestyle choice, but very often it's about social isolation. Um, and uh, as I say, some care and support is, is needed. Um, the, uh, the, la the latter category is really generally an enforced move. It's, uh, it's when you have an accident, when you uh, end up in hospital and then you can't go back home again and you're moving into um, institutional care, 24-hour uh, care um, uh, um, scenario. So you'll see down the left-hand side there, um, the top bar, um, the dark blue, is staying put in your own home with home care services. Um, the next one is uh, what I term independent living. So it's very close to mainstream housing, but it's designed to be inclusive. Um, and uh, it will have some sort of social aspect to it as well, a, a focus. It might just be one multifunctional room where uh, people can get together and socialize. The next uh, level is um, assisted living um, or um, what is common, more commonly known, certainly in the public sector, is extra care housing. And that is where you have your own apartment, um, but you also have a range of communal facilities and staff um, support and care facilities so um, that you can actually um, uh, you know, live as part of the community with the care and support that you need, but still have your independence. Um, the next is, is the institutional care, care homes, 24-hour care. And obviously the cost is going up as, 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 as you go through the spectrum here. Um, and then the continuing care community is combining more than one of those typologies within one development. Um, now that might be a large retirement village, but it can also be a relatively small scheme where you've got um, perhaps some 24-hour care bedrooms alongside uh, independent living or extra care. So it provides something of a continuum. So in terms of the independent living offer, um, at the centre of it is an attractive uh, uh, home, um, but there are a number of things that uh, need to gather around that, such as care and support at the time when you need it. Um, a community interface, we don't want to become isolated, we want uh, to stay in touch with family and friends, so preferably be housed uh, within the community with which we're familiar. There's the lifestyle alternative, and that comes through the other range of facilities that you're actually providing within the development. And then there's independence and control, that we all want to maintain as much independence in terms of the, and control over our lives as we can. The concept of lifetime neighborhood takes the inclusive, uh, accessible design issue out beyond the home into the surrounding area. Is it easy to get around in terms of wheelchair, um, and other um, mobility aids? Um, are there a range of facilities on our doorstep in terms of shopping, uh, tra transport links, um, uh, entertainment, uh, and other facilities? Right, I'm now going to uh, um, go over uh, the, the uh, channel into, um, into uh, Europe and just have a look at two or three um, projects. I was part of a a panel that was appointed by the government in 2009 to look at the future shape of housing for older people. 
and um, we visited the exemplar projects across um, Europe and across the UK and uh, published a report called the Happy Report, that's the um, Housing and Aging Population Panel for Innovation. Um, but uh, these were three schemes that we actually um, uh, visited while, while we were on, on this, um, this, this tour. Um, so that was the report that was uh, published in 2009. Um, and the report had um, a set of 10 recommendations, and these are becoming more and more influential in terms of, of uh, future policy and um, uh, the design of housing for people, over people.